and the brightest, but glory to God. All right, beloved. So all of a sudden, you know, it's not working. All of a sudden, devil is a liar. So, like I was saying, today the word was, Elisha, be reminded and be refreshed. Amen. I heard the Lord saying, Elisha, be reminded and be refreshed. All right. Um, the man of God, Elisha, had just gone through, uh, he had just gone through this face-off with Jezebel. Jezebel was the evil queen. Jezebel was the one who threatened his life. She was the one who said, see if I don't make um, uh, the same thing happen to you as you did to my prophet. Jezebel wanted to kill Elisha. All right, Jezebel had threatened Elisha. Now, Jezebel in this realm and in real life is a sucking demon. It's a demon of serpentine nature. When it latches on, it doesn't let go till it poisons you and kills you, right? So, when Jezebel threatened Elisha, um, the Bible says that Elisha took that very seriously, all right? For this month of February, we had gone through some crazy things in the body of Christ. It wasn't just scary. It was everywhere. It was happening to every dedicated person. It was different faces. It was different circumstances or different places. But it was the same thing happening all around the world. All right? The devil had come like a, you know, the Bible says, he come down having great anger against a woman and his seed. That's exactly what it was. All right? The devil had come down, ticked off. And like, like this is what I saw in the spirit. Like a wave that's crashing down. And it's so powerful. Or the current or the force of it is so powerful that it dashes straight through to the sand. And it turns up the sand. And the water is no longer water, but it's grainy and it's gritty. You ever took a dive in that? Not nice. All right. Anybody who surfs, uh, anybody ever ate a surfboard? Anybody ever had a surfboard tumble on them? <laughs> yeah, I had that. So the devil was like. preached the work wouldn't get done there'd be a giving up and a quitting in the body of Christ but thanks be to God hallelujah he sent a word every single day when I tell you he sent the word and it just started to touch and heal and it was doing what it was sent to do now Elisha the man of God had just faced off with Jezebel and Jezebel had threatened him you killed the prophet of Baal? Well, I'm going to do the same thing to you by morning. So what did Elisha do? He did what every normal man would How far you got to go to flee from something? You just got to get away. You just got to go, 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 go. And you ever got the wind knock out of you? Whether if you fell, whether if you climbed to some, like maybe a mountain or a hill, or you went hiking, or you were running like a marathon. You, you know when you're running, when, you, when you, you're exerting yourself, and adrenaline is going, and all of a sudden, you stop, and you can't breathe. And it's like, what happened? You need to catch your breath. You need to take a breather. Elisha, the man of God, Elijah, he had um, 
fallen asleep. Maybe under tiredness. Maybe he fainted. I don't know. The Bible says he'd fallen asleep under a juniper tree. And the Bible tells us that an angel of the Lord was sent. An angel of the Lord was sent to wake him up. You ever fell asleep really tired or so exhausted and someone came with like maybe a bowl of ice cream or a piece of cheesecake or a sandwich or some food and they say, hey, you, you fell asleep without eating. Wake up and eat. And you just... You're so knackered, you're so tired, that you just give like a... <laughs> and you just continue sleeping. The Bible says that when the angel of the Lord came to Elisha, and he said, Arise. Elisha saw um, hot cake being baked on the coals. Yet God doesn't do anything still. God is fresh all the time. He has come with something new. <laughs> Alright. Hot cakes on the stove for Elisha. Fresh cakes out of the oven. Fresh pancakes off the stove. It's coming. Elisha saw it. And then maybe he was too hot, tired to eat. Maybe his body was just so, so tired that um, he just wanted to rest. The Bible tells us that Elisha woke up and he looked at the angel and he went back to sleep. <laughs> Imagine an angel of the Lord comes to you and you're so tired that you just knock out. You don't even bother. You're like, yeah, I'll leave that right up there. I'm getting up my life. That's what the man of God did. He, he, he just woke up, looked at the cakes on the coal, he looked at a jar of water, and, and that was it. He went back to sleep. And then, the angel of the Lord came to Elisha again and shook him. You've gone a day's journey. We're going to read it right now, actually. Come to me. Get your Bible. First Kings. Wow, it opened on the First Kings 19. <laughs> here we go. Don't even have to look for it. Um, here we go. First Kings 19. Take it up in verse... And it says, But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat under a broom tree, or juniper tree. Whatever a broom tree is, I don't know. Okay, look what it says. He went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die, and said, It is enough, Lord, take my life. For I am no better than my father's. He got so exhausted. You ever got to that point where you're exhausted and you say, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I can't. Look at this. It said, then he lay and, and slept under the broom tree. So he fell asleep in exhaustion. The Bible says, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. Huh? Okay, here we go. And then he looked there, and by his head, his head was a cake, baked on coals, and a jar of water. So he ate, and he drank, and he lay down again. The Bible says, he got up, he ate, and he drank, and he lay down again. You know, it's about me. I've done that already when I when I'm like when I wasn't feeling well. My mom came with food and water or, or drink. It might have been a little bit. I don't want to say. But anyway, she came with it, and I took a sip of each and a bit like a. You know when you're not feeling well and you don't have appetite. Yeah. The Lord was here to encourage Elisha. Look at this. He said, and he looked and by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water, and he ate and he drank and lay down again. But he didn't do it enough. It was not enough. So what happened? Then the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. I came to tell you today that God said to me, Father, he said, 
arise and eat, because the journey is great. He said, I'm sending my reminder angels. I'm sending my refreshment angels to help you along the way. The Bible says, they who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with the wings of an eagle. God is going to be their strength. The Bible says that when a man is running a marathon, or when a man or woman, when I say man, I mean human, is running the race to win it, we got to push with exertion. We got to push ourselves. We're not just running a race. We're running a race to win it. The Bible says that the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. So if it's by force, it means there's exertion, there's strength that needs to be used. There's When a battle comes, you can't just hold a sword and be like, no, you got to pull your sword like Conan and say so you want some of this, you're going to get some of this devil. And you got to swing and slash and slay those demons. You have to lift your hands with power. And strength. The Bible says if a man runs a marathon, he needs to practice. You know, like an athlete when they're running a race. You know, the Bible says just like we're running the race to get the prize, which is the crown of life. We have to exert ourselves. We're pushing ourselves. So what happens in a marathon? If we continue to run the race and run and run and run and run and run, and run it's a marathon, right? you get a refreshment the Bible says that God is mindful of every single thing that we have need of in every step of the journey the Lord is with us and sometimes we neglect to look at this sometimes we neglect to remember this God says I've come to remind you that I know every single detail of you I know the hairs on your head you don't know the hairs on your head I know how much hair you have on your head. And he says, I know every single detail about you. I know the race that you're running. I know the journey that you're walking. I know the battle that you're facing. I know, says the Lord, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and to give you future and hope. The Bible says, when we go through suffering, somebody check 1919 for me, um, in the Hebrew Strongest Concordance, as well as 1414, I just saw it flash. Um, the Bible says, what was I saying? Right, when we're suffering, or we're going through a battle, or we're going through trials, or we're going through tribulation, the suffering that we're going through births patience. And when patience is birth, the character of God is birth. Because how many know, say amen, that patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Wait upon the Lord, I say. Wait upon Him. Patience is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that patience births what? Character. It's a characteristic of God. And when we begin to dive into this and the character of God, and we really begin to see who He is, and understand that this is the blessed hope, understand that He is the blessed way, ah, something begins to rise in us that tells us that the prize is real. The journey that we're running is real. The prize at the end of the journey is real. He who has come with refreshment is real he who is reminding us that the prize is real and it's all worth it he is real the bible says that the suffering will birth patience and patience births character 
and character of God births hope because he is hope. Hallelujah. So when you find the character of God, you find him as Jesus Christ. And when you find him as Jesus Christ, you find him as the blessed hope. The assurance that we all have hope in. Hallelujah. That we all have a promise in. Glory to God. Somebody check 2121 Hebrew concordance to me. I see 1919, 1414, and 2121. I heard the Lord saying that I've come to remind you, like I came to remind Sarah. Do not laugh, Sarah. I said you're going to conceive in your old age. I know you thought it was funny, but Sarah, you're laughing because you're really ashamed. You think that the Lord is making fun, but the Lord knows every single detail. God says, Sarah, don't you think that I knew that when I told Abraham he would bear a heir from his own body that you felt bad in your heart? Don't you know that I knew, Sarah? Don't you know that I was equipping you to bring forth that child? You didn't have to say, Lord, I don't know what maybe you want me to. Somebody check 2222 in the spirit. I'm um, sorry, in the Hebrew concordance. Uriel is here. God says, Sarah, don't you know? Hallelujah. Don't you? I feel it. Hallelujah. He said, don't you know, Sarah, that I was equipping your womb to bring forth that child? I came to remind you that I know the plans that I have for you. Hallelujah. I'm not here to bring a, a sorrow to you. I'm not here to bring uh, discouragement to you. God says, Sarah, I knew the littlest, the tiniest detail of your heart. I knew it. Like Daniel. When I went to Daniel, says the Lord. A Daniel, I heard your words. The day you set yourself to understand me, I heard your words. But the prince of Persia withheld my message from the Lord, said the angel Gabriel. Somebody check 2323, Hebrew concordance. Gabriel said, the prince of Persia withheld me. God did not forget you. God did not forget you. Daniel, God did not forget you. Daniel, I heard your cry. I heard your cry, said the angel Gabriel. And God had sent me with a message. But the prince of Persia had withhold me for 21 days. And Daniel, as you went into fast and prayer, you began to break the yokes. You began to slay the demons. You began to empower the angels that was fighting with me. And have come just as I was sent. The Lord cares, Daniel. Just like the Lord cared about Sarah. Ah, hallelujah. <laughs> Daddy, you're so good. Ah, and in so many instances, so many instances, when Hannah was praying for a baby and she went uh, before uh, the temple and Eli saw her and he said she was drunk, but she continued to pray. She travailed in her heart and her lips were moving and they, Eli couldn't understand, but God knew. And while Eli mocked her and said, woman, you're, you're on wine or something, quit drinking, have some pride or something, uh, you know, have some shame or something, not some pride, but have some pride in yourself, have some shame or something before the Lord. Hannah continued and she said, she's not drunk. The Lord said, didn't you know, Hannah, that I knew every detail of the pain in your heart? You were in travail before me for a child. And there you were, being pulled down. Didn't you know that I was going to respond? Because you travailed. Now let me show you something. With Hannah, with Elisha, with Daniel, and even with Abraham. I heard the Lord saying, Abraham, Abraham. Don't you know when I was going to rain down the fire and brimstone on Sodom that I knew that your concern for, your, for Lot was in your heart? Don't you know that I knew that? When you said, Lord, and even if there's 40, 
and you went all the way down, Abraham, to 10. Don't you know, Abraham, that you were pushing to, to intercede for Lot? Don't you know that I knew that? Yes, says the Lord. That's why I came down. And before I destroyed Sodom, Abraham, Abraham, I was aware of your need. I was aware of your need, says the Lord. The Lord cares. He sent me to tell somebody that he cares. When nobody else cares, he cares. The tiniest detail, he cares. He says, I know. I know what you have need of. I am who I am. I am the good shepherd. He says, I care. Hallelujah. So when Elisha, the prophet of God, was running from Jezebel, and God knew that Elisha was scared, he thought that he was the only one left. And, uh, if he had been killed, um, if he had been killed, then there'd be no more prophets for the Lord. But let me show you something between all these three, right? Um, four. Hannah continued in her prayer, even though Elijah was mocking her. Even though the storm was raging and the waves were bashing in the sand and it's the water had sand in it now. Lord, I'm bathing in the water and it's supposed to be refreshing, but there's sand in my eyes now, and there's sand in my hair, and there's sand on my skin. Lord! But I'm still bathing, <laughs> okay? Now, Elijah said this. He was zealous for the Lord. Look at this. Come all the way down to um, verse 14 of First Kings 19. And he said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. So Elisha, even though he was going through this, he was mindful that God needed a prophet to stand. That God needed a man to stand in the gap. Or God needed a man to do his work. He was zealous for the Lord. Even though he was battered down, he was still zealous for the Lord. To be zealous for something means to have such an enthusiasm, a passion, a, a liking, a, a just, you know, a yielding to it. Hannah, when Hannah was troubled with Eli, yeah, he didn't do it on purpose, did he? He didn't really know. But still, she was troubled by Eli. She continued to pray. She was zealous for the Lord. Do you see that? Daniel... When Daniel's prayer wasn't heard, for three weeks Daniel travailed. He was zealous for the Lord. Abraham, when Abraham met the Lord and he said, I'm going down to Sodom to see if it has been, if it's as evil as has come up to me. Abraham didn't get discouraged. He continued to pray. He continued to petition for the Lord. Lord, if there's 40, if there's 10, he went down. He was zealous. There's something that's putting all of this together. The Lord is merciful. The Lord, he cares. He cares about every single detail. Every single thing that troubles the people's heart. He cares. I came to tell you that he cares. Hallelujah. He cares. God says, tell somebody who has the fire of Elisha in them. Tell somebody who's feeling discouraged. Tell somebody that the Lord cares. He cares. 
He knows, hallelujah, He knows you're rising up and you're laying down. He knows you're going out and you're coming in. He knows. He's aware. Every single person, every single hour, every single detail, the Lord is in it. He knows. I came to tell somebody that the Lord cares. He cares. Oh, hallelujah. Let that sink in. He cares. He cares so much. He cares. He loves you. He loves you. He cares. He cares. Oh, beloved. He cares. Hallelujah. So let's read. The Bible says in 1 Kings 19. But he himself, Elisha, went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a broom tree and he prayed that he might die. And said, it is enough. So when people are praying that they should die, when people who are serving the Lord, it's not easy. Don't ever think that it's easy. It's not easy. It looks easy because Jesus makes it look easy. But it's not easy. It really isn't. Look what he said. He said, Elisha prayed that he might die. And said, it is enough. Now, Lord, take my life. For I'm no better than my father. You see, he started to talk a bit like Job there. He thought that the punishment was upon him. For something that he'd done. Or, or something. Look at it. And then as he lay, he lay and slept under a broom tree. Suddenly an angel touched him. And said to him, arise and eat, Elisha. Arise and eat. And he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. A jar. God put it in a glass, a fancy glass for him. Look at it. And it said, He ate and he drank and lay down again. The Bible says in verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for you. The journey is too much for you. It's a long journey. And I know what you need. So you better take care of that body. So you can have a strong mindset. So you can have a strong vessel for the spirit of the living God to work in. Look what it says. God is mindful of every detail. And it says, he laid down again. The angel of the Lord came back the second time. And touched him and said, arise and eat. Because the journey is too great for you. If you're like me, before I do the Lord's work, I can't eat. I don't know. If I eat before I do it, it's like the word doesn't come as strong. So I don't eat before. I do it. I eat after. My father's food is the work that I give. And uh, the work that I'm doing for him. And if I rest, except if it's a Sabbath, this is so bad, if I take a rest, I really have to be either sick, like to the point that I can't walk, or really out of it, like to the point that I can't walk. Because if I am able to go out there, even with a little bit of strength, and I stay at home, I will be troubled all the day long. I will not sleep and I will not eat. I, it will be, I will be harassed, basically. When the Bible says His word was like a fire shut up in my heart and burning in my bones and I could not be silent, that's no jokey thing. That is what it is. Alright? So, I just have this bad habit of running like a marathon. I'll stop for a break until I'm finished. Until I get to the goal that God has set out for me. Until I get to the place that God wants me to be. I am not a quitter. I don't complain when it comes to the Lord. So look what it says here. Elisha. Elisha had run one day's journey into the forest or the wilderness. 
You know, the wilderness, it's a dense place. It's a place without food and drink. And you've got wild beasts. You've got uh, the sun beating down and all of that. All right? When the angel came a second time, he woke up. It says, he arose and ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. Whoa, God had given him some special food. How many of us want special food from the Lord? Hallelujah. If we look at the Bible, in the way of 40, Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. He went without food and water. Hallelujah. The Bible says that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The Bible says that 40 nights and 40 days, 40 days and 40 nights, it rained on the earth. And Noah and his family were in the ark of safety. 40 days and 40 nights. It's the strength of the Lord that even kept them sane inside of that floating boat. Lavishly spread out a table just yet before you. Just yet. Just yet. Because he needs you to stand in spiritual strength. So what does he do? He sends you a little. He sends you what you need. I hear the Lord saying, search my heart. Yes. God says, I know the portions that you need. I know the exact portions. Just like Israel in the wilderness. Just like when I rained down the manna and I said, each man will take according to their household. Each man will take according to their household and no more. Else it was found rotting and all of that. God says, I'm giving you that. But what was the lesson of the manna? The lesson of the manna was to trust the Lord that he knows what he's doing. Trust the Lord. I hear him say, trust me. I care. Hallelujah. Ooh, for a time such as this. Hallelujah. So to go through the 40 days and 40 nights, Noah and his family would have had to rely on the word of the Lord. To go through the 40 days and 40 nights of fasting, Jesus would have had to rely on what? It's the word of the Lord that strengthened the flesh, not bread. Not even when Satan came and said, turn this stone into bread. Yeah. What did Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I came to ask somebody, do you find that in these, especially this month of February, have you been eating less? Have you been, uh, has your, your appetite for food been less? God is calling you to a fast. Has your appetite for water been less? God is calling you to a fast. He wants you to come away from the natural and into the supernatural. And that's where we're getting ready to go in. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is next. And we're going to be fasting every single year like we do that straight into Passover. For 40 days and 40 nights. Get ready. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be miraculous. Amen. So let's just read it out here and let's wrap it up. Amen. The Bible says that, take it on verse 8 of 1 Kings 19. So he arose and ate and drank. And he went in the strength of that food for 40 days and 40 nights. As far as Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night in that place. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What are you doing here, Elisha? Now, this kind of scared me. Because this morning he showed me this. And he said, Anoint someone with the same mantle that I have. Anoint them. I'm waiting for that person. When that person comes to me, I'm going to know. I, I kind of got the feeling that God was getting ready to take me away or something. I don't know. I got kind of jittery. Because I saw um, what he said today. And I got a double confirmation um, today as well. Which is just, wow. 
What are we waiting on? The rapture. All right? Look at this. It says, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very zealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. And then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Look at this. Look at this shaking. God is bringing to the reality now. Look at this. Then he said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks into pieces before the Lord. Where can you hide? But the Lord was not in the wind. Look at this. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, the earthquake in five diverse places. Look at this. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. Look what he said. Hallelujah. Where can you hide from the Lord? Where can I go? That you are not. Where? Where? So what is happening to you in a place that I'm not mindful of, says the Lord? What? Absolutely nothing. What can withhold my hand? Absolutely nothing. The hand of the Lord is not shortened. Hallelujah. O Karimamba Hasataya Limasoto. But it is mighty to save, mighty to deliver. Look what he says. And after the fire, a still small voice. And so it was when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elisha? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken their covenant, and turned on the altars, and killed your prophets with soon, and I alone have left, and they seek to take my life. See, his story's not changing. He's just, he's, he's like repeating the same words, because fear. All right, look what it says. And then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when you arrive, anoint Hazael as king over Syria. And you shall anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat. You know what Shaphat means, right? It means judgment. And it says, the son of Shaphat, and Abel, Mehola. You shall anoint as prophet in your place. That shook me this morning. It shook my core. Look what it says. And it shall be that whosoever escapes the sword of Hazael, Jehu will kill. And whoever escapes the sword of Jehu, Elisha will kill. And verse 18. Yet I have reserved seven thousand in Israel all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. and now he goes and he departed from there and found Elisha the son of Shaphat who was plowing the twelve yoke of oxen before him and he was with the twelve he was with what? The twelve. Completion. Look at it. It's like the twelve tribes of Israel, kind of pointing to that. And it says, And Elisha, Elijah passed by him and threw his mantle on him. Hallelujah. There's a passing of the mantle. When God showed me Aaron and Ur lifting up the hand of Moses, it was my very own hands as well that he was lifting up. And he said there needs to be help. So what he's going to do is take a portion of the spirit he poured on me. And he's going to give it 
Hallelujah for someone. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Somebody's going to share it. Hallelujah. The same portion of spirit that is poured upon me, he's going to pour it out on somebody, and somebody's going to stand. Hallelujah. Uh, just like he gave me a word that I'm not going to speak right now, but the word I gave to Moses with the 70, he gave me a word. And I've been trying to get these people, but these people have to come. I don't know where they are. They're coming, I declare it in Jesus' name. This is the word of the Lord. He cares about every single detail. Whether it be your body, your hair, your skin, your eyes, what you got to eat, what you got to drink, where you're sleeping, where you are, who's after you, what enemy's trying to fight you, what journey you got to take. The Lord cares what pain is in your body. He cares. He cares. He cares. And like he showed Elisha, Elijah could not hide in any place. God showed him who he is and the power that he is. Hallelujah. The what he can do. Where can I go from the Lord? Where can I hide? No. Lord said he cares. He's in check. 5115 in the Hebrew concordance and see which angel is here um, when I see these um, when they flash before me you should know by now that angels are present that it's kind of like a heads up in the sphere so we're going to check 14 14 19 19 um, 21 21 I think 51 15 and um, I don't remember if there's any other but to God be the glory. Amen. So I pray that you receive this word. I just release the refreshing angels and the reminding angels. That same ones that came to Elijah. It's the same one that's coming to you. It's the same ones that broke me that box of broccoli. That was worth like $800. <laughs> that man probably kicked himself. But God used him to bless. He was like, oh, this is not good. And then when I found it, four people walking with me. They were immensely blessed. They were like, what? Really? Okay. So everybody went to him with like $80 worth of broccoli, which was nice. And then God had me make like a, he was, Papa was in the kitchen with me. And he was telling me to put this and this. Now obviously me, I was just cutting up vegetables. And as he said to put in, I'm putting in. How much, how much, how much? And just make and eat. He said, rise and eat. And I feel so strong when I tell you. Ooh la la. I feel strong. Glory to God. So, beloved, I just pray that you receive this word. And I'm going to try and do it over again on a clear um, video so I can share it. But in Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you, Brother Mark, and everybody else who comes on. In Jesus' name. Shalom.